This is the last uh, talk I will be hosting today. I am really happy that I was able to host uh, three, four talks uh, this afternoon. Thank you for uh, giving me the chance to be part of the event, at least uh, remotely. I will be presenting uh, Frederick Ram. He will be giving the talk, There Might Be a Misunderstanding. So Frederick will be speaking about some of the often heard uh, uh, basic concepts about OSM. One of them, we are not a map for the database. The map doesn't not matter, the community does. OpenStreetMap.org is not aimed at the public, but at mappers. We map uh, that's on the ground, uh, not what the government or the landowner wants. So that's some of the points uh, Frederick will be speaking. Fred has been uh, a long uh, contributor in OSM. He's also co-founder of Your Fabric. He wrote the first book of OSM that is also available in English with his co-founder, uh, Jochen uh, Topf. And uh, he has been in all set of the maps, but one that he missed. So let's welcome uh, Frederick. He will be uh, presenting this talk. And something before I forget, uh, please start writing your questions and answers during the talk. Don't wait to the end, please, because otherwise, I mean, at the time you write, it will be kind of slower. If you have a question during the talk, please feel free to write it in the pad already. Thanks a lot. Welcome, Fred. And Hello, I'm Frederick, and I am going to talk about common misconceptions in OpenStreetMap. You might have heard any of the following being said about OpenStreetMap. It's a map of the whole world. Uh, the OpenStreetMap website is a competitor to Google, Google Maps. Uh, you might have heard people say that um, government data or official data is being published on OpenStreetMap. Or that big players like Apple, Facebook or Amazon are powering OpenStreetMap. Or even running it. Um, you might have heard people say that OpenStreetMap is mainly a humanitarian project. Or you might have heard people say that OpenStreetMap is a huge data set of immense commercial value. All these things are wrong. Or at least not entirely correct. And I'm going to use my talk to explain a couple of these misconceptions or in how far these are wrong. The first thing I would like to talk about is something that you frequently hear and that's, we are not a map. Uh, newcomers to OpenStreetMap would certainly be astonished and think, well, I've signed up to this to make a better map. So now people are telling me we are not a map. What's that all about? The we are not a map is often said in response to people being concerned about how something appears on the OpenStreetMap website. Um, if you go to OpenStreetMap.org, the map that you will see by default is the so-called OpenStreetMap Carto map style. And any map style has to select certain things for inclusion in the map and others cannot be included. Those might be things with just too much detail, like, like opening hours of a certain shop or or the the exact voltage of um, a power line or it might be just uh, too detailed like individual uh, trees or waste baskets or something that is just too small to show on certain zoom levels um, every map has to decide what they want to show every map style but that should never deter us from mapping it so we want to make uh, a detailed data collection that map producers can then use to select the stuff that they want to show. Another frequent thing uh, that's also connected to this uh, is uh, people will say, don't map for the renderer. The renderer is the software that makes the map from the data. And um, when mapping in OpenStreetMap, you should not think too much about how the stuff that you map will appear on the map because that's subject to decisions by the map designers and um, sometimes people go so far as to mismap things just so that they look nicer on the standard map and that's what we call mapping for the render and you should 
by all means avoid that. For example, if you were to say, well, I've mapped the footway here and it shows as a dotted red line on the map, but I really like the blue lines more, so I'm going to map it as a cycleway just so that it appears in blue. That would be mapping for the render. Yeah, so we are not a map. We are a database that can be used to make a map from that. Another thing that often comes up when discussing OpenStreetMap is uh, that people mistakenly assume that OpenStreetMap.org aims to compete with Google Maps. Um, you might be new to OpenStreetMap and like it very much and recommend it to your friends. And your friends might be using the OpenStreetMap website and say, well, you know, it lacks this feature and that feature and that feature. It's not really what I would like to use. And then you go back to OpenStreetMap and say, hey, folks, we should really improve all these things. And then what you get back is, well, you know, we're not really aiming to be an end user competitor to Google Maps, so go away. Now, what this is about is not so much an elitist attitude where we say, well, the great unwashed out there, let, the, let them use Google Maps. It's more OpenStreetMap being realistic. Um, we lack a lot of, lot of things that would be required to make a proper Google Maps competitor, like, for example, aerial imagery. We don't have our own source of aerial imagery. We don't have our own source of traffic data. Um, we lack the computing resources to make enough service available for all people who use Google Maps to suddenly switch to OpenStreetMap. And we also lack the uh, human resources. We don't have enough people to provide all the support and answer all the questions that would necessarily come when uh, lots of people, lots of end users were to switch to OpenStreetMap. So this is a little bit of a sour grapes thing. We say that, okay, well, we couldn't, we couldn't handle it if everyone were to use OpenStreetMap instead of Google Maps, so we don't even try. What we will often say is the OpenStreetMap website is mainly meant for mappers. And of course, it's also a showcase that, that we can tell people, hey, uh, look at our website. You can, you can see how much data we have and so on. But um, we are not aiming to be a Google Maps competitor. We are, the website is mainly for people who have um, a bit more interest in OpenStreetMap and who want to sort of find out about the history of a certain object and so on. So that's... That's this, we don't want to compete with Google Maps thing. Another frequent source of confusion is when people assume that OpenStreetMap in some way publishes official or of government sanctioned data. This comes in many shapes and forms. Sometimes people assume that they could uh, upload government data uh, to OpenStreetMap. Uh, sometimes people are looking for ways to have data in OpenStreetMap that is not changeable. Like when you say, okay, these, this is an official data set of boundaries and there's no reason why anyone would ever change that. So can I, ha can I somehow make this immutable? Um, or other things that happen are uh, people, people say that, <clears throat> Uh, this is my private land and I want to decide which paths on my private land are shown in OpenStreetMap and which aren't. Or um, you might have people who say, well, the UN has published this resolution about the boundary between state A and state B, so I request that OpenStreetMap follows that. All these are in, in some way uh, based on the idea that there is some kind of official data that that is always right, uh, or someone has the ultimate say about something. And this is not something that we do in OpenStreetMap. When data goes into OpenStreetMap, then we take ownership of that data. And our mappers then have all the right to make any modifications to the data that they want. Uh, so you cannot really have data in OpenStreetMap that is immutable. Everything in OpenStreetMap is mutable, and if it wasn't, then there would not be any reason to have it in OpenStreetMap in the first place. 
because the whole OpenStreetMap database engine and the editors is all about being able to edit data and if you don't, can't edit it, then why have it in OpenStreetMap anyway? Um, also, uh, when people say that, oh, this is on my private ground and I request that you remove this, or if people say that, uh, oh, this is the official UN boundary or something, our response is usually, uh, well, we don't care so much about the official or legal or whatever side of things. We care about what is on the ground. So our mappers look at the situation on the ground. They might be using aerial imagery for that or other sources, but in the end, it's what's on the ground that counts. And if there is a path, then we will map that path and put it on the map. Um, if it's a private access path, then we can map that also. We can just add the information. Well, this is, this is private and you, you can't use this path, but it doesn't change the fact that a path exists. And just because because the path is on your private ground doesn't mean that you can uh, dictate whether or not it is shown on our map. Something that should also be said here is that OpenStreetMap is not a business directory. We are mainly a database of geographic facts and there is some room in there to record where a certain business is, what the name and maybe the opening hours of that business are. But that's about it. Um, we are not recording uh, keywords or advertising copy. Um, and we did, we, we often have to remove uh, advertising that is added by businesses themselves or by SEO companies thinking that it would somehow help them if they, if they add something to OpenStreetMap about your local trusted dentist in the region for over 20 years, making people smile again, la 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 la. Uh, this is, these are not facts on the ground. This is advertising and it's not welcome in OpenStreetMap. Similar with uh, the boundary situation, you, you might have situations where country A says, oh, but this part of our country has been illegally uh, occupied by country B and, um, uh, you're you're supporting their cause by showing it on the map as if it were true. Um, what we usually show about boundaries is um, the who controls something. If someone, if if some country controls an area, um, then that's what we show on OpenStreetMap because it doesn't help to show the situation that people would like to have or the situation that might be ethically or morally or whatever legally right. Um, if someone controls an area, then, then that's what we tend to show. So that's also and trying to apply this on the ground principle where we say this, okay, let's check, let's, let's see what's on the ground. Of course, there are limits to that. Um, if it's about borders on open sea or the boundaries of protected areas uh, or national parks that might not actually have a fence where where the boundary is it's difficult to verify them on the ground so yes we do sometimes um, rely on on data sets provided by third parties or governments but it's the exception Depending on the region you're in, your first contact with OpenStreetMap might well have been in the humanitarian context. Um, maybe uh, running some humanitarian mapathon or participating in a missing maps project or something like that. But this, this aid um, aspect is just a tiny, tiny part of what OpenStreetMap is. Um, it does receive a lot of press attention. Uh, it also attracts much more funding than OpenStreetMap itself does. So it can easily, it, it can sometimes be a case of the tail wagging the dog and uh, the humanitarian aspect being, um, being thought as very important to OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap has always had a, an altruistic component. But so, but it was more people mapping for 
their own peer group, like um, cyclists getting together together and saying, hey, let's make the best cycle map and all contribute to OpenStreetMap. Of course, every single, every individual contributor does not only contribute for their own good, but also uh, to help others. There's not so much the, the humanitarian uh, work in OpenStreetMap tends to be um, tends to be cross-continent, like uh, um, uh, privileged rich people in one continent helping uh, underprivileged poor people in another continent by by giving them maps, right? So you have the givers of maps and the receivers of maps or map data, um, and that's that's a kind of an exceptional situation in OpenStreetMap. It's not how OpenStreetMap normally works, because the normal um, work in OpenStreetMap would be that um, you help yourself or you help your own peer group. Now the humanitarian mapping is slowly moving towards that and trying to uh, get away from this, okay, <clears throat> college kids in North America map uh, a city in, uh, in Africa somewhere, uh, slowly trying to get local people involved and, and thereby uh, doing using the same principles that are used elsewhere in OpenStreetMap, namely that local, local knowledge is used to make the map. But yes, humanitarian mapping uh, in, its, uh, in its current or past form is, um, is not the mainstay of OpenStreetMap. It's one aspect, um, but OpenStreetMap is not mainly a humanitarian project. In the history of OpenStreetMap, there have been many misleading press reports about OpenStreetMap being run by one company or another. That might have been CloudMade or Mapbox in the earlier days, or it might be Facebook, Apple, Amazon, or any of the other big names today. Uh, all these companies uh, have something to do with OpenStreetMap. They have, at various times and in, in various sizes contributed money or even develop, development work or mapping to OpenStreetMap. But none of these companies is essential to OpenStreetMap. They are contributors, um, but OpenStreetMap could perfectly well work without them. OpenStreetMap, the, the mainstay of OpenStreetMap is the millions of hobbyists, private individuals who contribute to OpenStreetMap and Companies help us pay the bill for servers. Um, some of these companies even employ people, pay people to uh, map, to contribute data to, to the map. But as I said, it's not, it's not essential. It's not like uh, these companies are running OpenStreetMap or in, are in any way required to keep OpenStreetMap going. It can even happen that uh, corporate contributions to OpenStreetMap are viewed with skepticism by the community when, um, when they work in non-standard way, so when, when they do not use local knowledge but instead employ people in one continent to uh, map in another continent, which often happens. Neither is OpenStreetMap run by the OpenStreetMap Foundation. The OpenStreetMap Foundation owns the trademarks um, and the domain names and pays for the servers uh, that run the OpenStreetMap database. But uh, the OpenStreetMap Foundation doesn't call the shots in OpenStreetMap. It doesn't tell people what to do. The Foundation's own goal is to support but not control the OpenStreetMap project. Continuing with that idea of uh, company contributions to OpenStreetMap, um, people might also say that OpenStreetMap is a huge data set of great value and that billions of dollars of revenue depend on OpenStreetMap in one way or the other. Now this billions of dollar figure has to be taken with a huge jar of salt because you arrive at figures like that by looking at all the businesses who use OpenStreetMap. 
and then uh, and then adding whatever revenue they they have and say oh there's billions of dollars of revenue depend on that of course they could just as easily use something else than open street map and buy commercial map data from somewhere else when people say that the value of the open street map database is huge it's not really correct because the actual value that we have is our community is the the group of people who have collected all the data and who are uh, willing and able to continue collecting the data and fixing it and curating it making sure that bugs are uh, corrected and that if something changes in reality it also changes in the data if we were to just take the data now as a static data set as a database then our data set would become stale and uninteresting in a very short time so the actual asset that we have is the community of people that is what we what we really have um it's also that also puts those commercial contributions that depend on paid mapping into into certain kind of context because paid mapping stops immediately when the flow of money stops whereas all the volunteer contributions that we have uh, they will continue mapping um, they do not need someone to to pay them constantly or or make them map in some way or the other this idea that the community is our actual asset um, also is the reason for many people being a bit skeptical about um, large imports of data or um, or the adding of of data that essentially is is uh, generated from aerial imagery by artificial intelligence machine learning um, these processes can be helpful data imports can be helpful or uh, ai assisted tracing can be helpful but uh, proponents of these technologies often go so far as to say that the community becomes less important mappers become less important if we can only hook up our systems to whatever um, existing database of pois there is or something uh, or government edited footprints building footprints if we can hook up our system to that then oh, we don't have to waste time mapping all that and this kind of misses the point because we want to engage more mappers to contribute their knowledge and um, adding just data into OpenStreetMap doesn't actually help us increase our value because our value is, is more mappers and not more data. On the contrary, it can happen that adding lots of data discourages mappers from contributing if they say, well, you know, why should I contribute? It's all been uh, dumped into OpenStreetMap from uh, some other source. Uh, I'm feeling swamped. Um, so th these are there are sometimes issues with that. Uh, we have to keep in mind that the most important resource we have is mappers, and we need to keep them happy to uh, continue contributing to OpenStreetMap. That's it for my talk. I hope that I was able to give you some. Uh, context to things that you might often hear in OpenStreetMap and yeah I hope that you will continue having fun at this conference and with OpenStreetMap and I'm signing off for now. Okay uh, thank you for uh, attending this talk by Frederick Ram. So we have many questions. Uh, I'm not sure if we will have the time for going through all. So we just have 20 minutes, but um, we will try for sure. If not, uh, maybe Fred can uh, cover the rest of the questions and comments through a blog. Fred is, is great at writing, so probably he can do that. So let's start with the first question, okay? So first question is, how to explain to uh, 6 million users, OpenStreetMap is not a map, and the website where you see a map 
cannot be used as any normal map. Well, the situation is that um, our website can be used as a normal map. It's not when I say we are not a map, uh, the, or the, oh, the OpenStreetMap website is not, is not aimed at uh, end users. That's mainly because it lacks a lot of features that an end user mapping site would have. Like for example, if you go to Google Maps, you can switch to aerial imagery. Uh, you can, there's an integrated MyMap feature where you can draw on the map and so on. And these are things that are, some of them are available with OpenStreetMap in some fashion. Uh, aerial imagery is not available in OpenStreetMap and will likely never be. Um, so we cannot, we cannot be a competitor to Google Maps. So that's, that's why I say uh, we are not, uh, uh, th this website is not aimed at end users. Of course, everyone can look at the map and can use what we have there, uh, but it's not the main purpose of OpenStreetMap.org uh, to be a, a map site that the whole world can use. Okay, thank you, Fred. So the next question is, how about Alan Moster's views? Any debate between you and him? And there's a note also, uh, someone says, I would love for a true debate on the versions of OSM, the project and community. And if we could add some voices, opinions from Asia, Africa, South America, uh, that, that would be great too. So that sounds like a good plan. I mean, there is still some slots available for later today or tomorrow. So that would be something that probably many people, including me, would love to see. So um, about Alan, uh, of course, I've saw, seen his uh, slides earlier this morning uh, or earlier today. And, uh, and yes, I have been one of the many, many people Alan has spoken to in forming his opinions. And um, they sort of, in some places, I might have been able to sort of inform him in one way or the other. Uh, in other places, uh, he's uh, chosen to uh, listen to other people. That's quite normal. If you like Alan, if, if you if you are relatively uh, new to the ecosystem and you talk to like uh, I don't know what hundreds of people he's spoken to on, on phones and in sessions, and I'm pretty sure that he has uh, gathered input from all the continents. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm uh, I think that he does a good job of um, of trying to understand uh, where we are and where we need to go. Okay, thank you, Fred. So the next question will be, the data seems outside of the point. Google Maps is a product uh, with definite end users and identified uh, goals. We don't even have a consistent understanding of the users for the website. Isn't that what confuses people about OSM? How can we better communicate what OSM is about? That's the next question, Fred. Yeah, there's been long talk about uh, changing our website to something that puts more focus on the community, something uh, where if you go to openstreetmap.org, the first thing that you see is not a map, but instead something that says that, hey, welcome to our great project. Here are some uh, videos of people who explain how great it is to contribute to OpenStreetMap. Here you can have some, some, you can see how the community works and how this project works. And by the way, we also have a map. This is an approach that the uh, German OpenStreetMap website, OpenStreetMap.de, has been uh, having for quite a while, and it has received mixed responses. Some people say, you know, I'm not interested in all this bullshit about community. I want a map. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, others say, yeah, this is this is what we should be doing. Yes, I would. I would also like that. I would also like to uh, to speak to talk more about the community and and have the map. Uh, also have the map there, but uh, with slightly less, uh, slightly less prominently. But this is the discussion that, that has to be had in the project. Okay, thank you for the answer, uh, Fred. So the next question will be, uh, how much of your talk is OSM policy versus your personal opinions? Well, so I'm, I've been with OpenStreetMap for, I don't know what, couple uh, since, since OpenStreetMap was two years old or something. So um, I, I do not have the power to speak for OpenStreetMap and say, uh, okay, because I'm the boss, this is how we're gonna do it. I can only say uh, from my experience, uh, what the project, what, what the characteristics of the project, project have always been like. Um, and there's always a question of, you know, uh, tradition versus innovation. 
maybe sometimes uh, there comes a point where you have to throw the ideas of old people like myself overboard and say, you know, from now on, we're going to do this differently. Uh, and in other aspects, maybe uh, you shouldn't throw too much overboard because then you stop being OpenStreetMap and you stop being that project that then you, then you lose the essence of OpenStreetMap. And finding that boundary between those areas where it makes sense to innovate and throw away some old ideas and those areas where you where the old ideas are actually that what makes OpenStreetMap this great project that has attracted us all, um, that's not always easy and also a matter of discussion. Uh, in OpenStreetMap, I have, apart from my role on the, on the data working group, I have no any call, kind of leading position in OpenStreetMap other than that, that I've been with the project for a long time. So uh, I mean, what I say is not always in policy. Okay, uh, thank you, Fred. So the next question will be, has anyone ever seriously argued that OSM should include promotional blur for businesses, like the Dentix example you gave? Um, argued, no, but um, I have personally deleted thousands of such advertising verbs from OpenStreetMap. So people are adding these advertising verbs. They aren't coming to argue with us and say, hey, why? Well, sometimes they do. Sometimes if you delete their stuff, they say, hey, why have you deleted this? And then you explain to them and say, you know, we're not for advertising. And then sometimes they understand, sometimes they don't. Uh, most of the time, people just dump their advertising into OpenStreetMap and we remove it and we don't hear from them again. Often these are people who create one single account for every POI they add. So most often, I guess, uh, SEO firms who are paid uh, to add this advertising to OSM. So yeah, we don't have lots of discussions with these people, but advertising blurbs are there. Okay, uh, thank you, Fred. So uh, I will go to a question that has uh, two uh, questions. So have you ever visited a mapping community in Africa, South America, Asia? That's the question. Um, I have been, well, I've been to, uh, to two Sotoms in, um, in Japan, and I have been to one Sotom in uh, Buenos Aires. So these, are my, these have been my contacts with uh, mapping communities in these areas, uh, limited to uh, state of map travel. Okay. Uh, thank you, Fred. Uh, and then the next question will be, uh, let's see, why couldn't OSM also be a business directory? Users need to know where is the dentist, the grocery, when it's open. The success of Sarah's uh, work during the COVID crisis uh, admitted for numbers tax mean you are more than just a map. Uh, those also question with some comments here. Yes, um, I was I was perhaps a bit uh, too um, too crass in saying not a business directory because yes, if there is actually a shop on the ground and that shop has a name, and that shop has opening hours, and maybe a telephone number or something, then that has valid information to contribute to OpenStreetMap. However, uh, we also have lots of people who just want to contribute their online businesses to OpenStreetMap, because they say, you know, if you are a business directory, then and, and I have this online shop where you can order something, I want to be on the map. And then we say, well, you know, do you have an office that is somehow visible from the outside? Because we only map stuff that is actually visible on the ground. And then people say, no, I don't really have a sign on my, I only do online, I have a website and that's all I have. And maybe I have a letterbox with some mail forwarding or something. And in these cases, we have to say, no, no, OpenStreetMap is not a place for you. There's also often uh, conflicts between the interests of business owners and, um, and our attempt to, um, to map reality on the ground. Business owners can sometimes uh, try to sort of describe their business in a more, uh, in a very creative way where a map is on the ground would then say, okay, well, you know, this hotel clearly only has five rooms and then the hotel also says, no, we have 25 rooms, da, 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 because whatever. Um, there is sometimes, uh, so you can add your business to OpenStreetMap, but you have to accept the supremacy of mappers who will decide what is, what are the facts on the ground? It's not you as a business owner. And that's the case with most business directories. You pay them to add your business. And then, of course, you also get to say what they should include, what keywords, and so on. Whereas in OpenStreetMap, it is us mappers who decide 
what gets added. Okay, thank you for your answer, uh, Fred. So the next question will be, why is there an us and them approach in how people use OSM? Whether it is civic tech or humanitarian, surely there is just human engagement with the project. Yeah, that's a very meta uh, meta thing. Um, it, it sometimes happens. Sometimes people come come to us with an us versus them approach to start with. They, they say, you are doing this wrong. I know how to do it better, and I'm going to tell you. And that's basically establishing the us versus them from, from the onset. Um, if someone comes to OSM and says, hey, great, uh, it's great what you're doing. I want to be a member of OpenStreetMap. I want to participate. Um, and then even if they have differing opinions, they will be able to influence the project in, in certain ways. And then it's not us versus them, but then it's uh, um, a uh, finding of this making of decisions inside the community. I think personally, I think that us versus them very much depends on how people approach OpenStreetMap. If they if if they say, well, we are building this small group of people here and we're doing something, and then let's upload that into OpenStreetMap or something, then there's inherently an us versus them because they are not fully interacting with OpenStreetMap. But yeah, th these are these are often just small gradual different differences and every them can also become an us after a while. All right. Um, the next question, uh, Fred, will be, uh, could an OSM as a whole attract just as much or more funding as the humanitarian groups uh, do, except that OSMF has not wanted this funding? Yes, the OpenStreetMap Foundation could probably attract more funding if they tried to. Um, they do not currently uh, envision uh, areas where they would spend that amount of money because once you start doing that, um, you become beholden to those uh, givers of money and you become dependent on them. So um, in the humanitarian world, you often have projects with, uh, with a well-defined lifetime. So you say, okay, let's attract funding for this particular project, which has a lifetime of two years, and we're going to need five full-time uh, staffers and then we, are, we, we can run this project and we need so and so much funds and please give us money. And then it runs for two years and then it's over and then you do something else or you don't. Um, OpenStreetMap cannot, does not have this luxury where we say, you know, um, because we, 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 we always need to continue. We cannot, uh, we cannot say, oh no, we, we don't have funding for this year, so we'll just stop the database servers. So that's that's slight difference between the OSMF and, and humanitarian uh, organizations, I guess. But I think with the, the new board and uh, the ideas that are currently being discussed, um, the OSMF might change to a model where they use slightly more funding than they did in the past. Okay, thank you, Fred. Uh, people, uh, we still have uh, seven minutes, but I don't think we are going to be able to cover all the questions, actually six minutes now. So if you see any questions that you really want to get answered, we're going to be still having, I think, three questions, maybe even four. Please add plus one, plus two, plus three, so I can focus on those questions in the path. Otherwise, uh, let's see if Fred can answer those after this talk. So the next question I will be asking right now, also will be having plus two people uh, asking, uh, is why did you go against the on the ground rule in Crimea? Yeah. That's um it, that's a very hard decision. Uh, the uh, the on the ground rule would actually dictate that uh, Crimea is mapped as uh, exclusively Russian territory because it is definitely occupied by Russian troops. Um, when this first happened, uh, people started when 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 Crimea was invaded by Russians. Um, we first um, there was some edit warring going on, and we said, you know, people, let's just. For, for the time being, let's just make Crimea part of both the Ukraine and Russia so that, you know, there's not too much fighting. And this has proven to be a compromise that uh, in at least the Russian community in OpenStreetMap and the Russian community, the Ukrainian community in OpenStreetMap could live with. They, were, they both were not perfectly happy, but it was a compromise and it was acceptable to both. And it's a violation of the on-the-ground rule. And then this 
boiled up again and people said, yeah, we really have to sort of change this. And then we said, okay, yeah, we have to change it. It's exclusive Russian. And everyone was so unhappy about this. And then the board decided to rescind the data working group's uh, decision and um, put, put back the old compromise. Personally, I'm happy with that because it provides the most peace in the, the best peace in the community and I don't want the community to fight. Um, it's not, it's technically a violation of our on the ground rule. But then again, every rule can have exceptions. And I think it, it proves that we are, it, it's okay to be flexible now and then and say, okay, you know, there's, yes, normally we have this rule, but we also make an exception. Thank you, Fred, for your answer. So the last question I think I will be uh, heading to uh, Fred is, should the OSMF been working with press to counteract this misconceptions or at least attempt to have as much press coverage as hot? I would very much like the OSMF to do more work uh, in the press and to, to be more aware of uh, what is being said about OpenStreetMap and then also get involved in the discussion. I think it's probably just a manpower issue or a person power issue. Um, we have a communications working group um, and it would basically fall into the realm of the communications working group to start initiatives like that where they say, you know, let's, let's do a bit more. Let's see what people are saying about OpenStreetMap. Let's not only retweet stuff, but also become involved in the discussions. But that is uh, an awful a lot of work and we currently just don't have the volunteers to do it. Thank you, Fred. So I think that's the last question. If, uh, Fred, you could put the rest of the questions in the pad and write in some other uh, way to communicate the answers that you have, that would be great because we still have a few minutes to just say goodbye. Thank you, everyone, for attending this uh, talk and also the previous talk that I was uh, I had the chance to host. It was really a pleasure being here with all these amazing talks and these great uh, contributors of OSM in different tools, in different ways, in different uh, a community. So thanks a lot for your time and looking forward to see you in 2021. Uh, enjoy the rest of the talks and enjoy the rest of the, the day.